Gwe, Delusi Jordan Bennett, Nina Migama, Delaway Nuji Ho Neg, Gadam Cook. Hello, my name is Jordan Bennett. I am Mi'kmaq from Steamville Crossing in Bay St. George, Newfoundland. This evening I want to talk about visiting. It's an action that we all do. Sometimes we can overlook it, push it aside, or forget to acknowledge its importance. And now, in 2017, with access to so much information and social media at our fingertips, it's easy to get swept up by our own digital presence and not be present in our everyday. When I say visiting, I'm not talking about just visiting with people. I am talking about visiting with non-humans, visiting with the land, and visiting objects. I want to share with you a quick glimpse at how visiting and remembering through visiting informs my artistic practice and my everyday. I am a visual artist. I work primarily in sculpture, painting, sound, new media, and carving. Coming from a small town on the west coast of Newfoundland, I grew up immersed in a beautiful, inspiring landscape. Everything we, know about where we come, everything we know about our identities is informed by the land in which we live and depend on. We record it through utilizing its rich elements, such as the colors it produces and the patterns that are present in nature. These traditions live on in the form of art, baskets, pictographs, wearable and ceremonial objects, songs and stories, all of which are present within indigenous cultures today. These objects, which hold important information about time, story, and flux, have always existed in our indigenous cultures and have been passed down with oral histories connected to them. Yet, oftentimes in some communities, their meanings have been taken away through processes of colonization and assimilation. My family has lived in the Bay St. George area of Newfoundland for countless generations. I fish in the same spot that my father, grandfather, and great-grandfather have fished. As a child, my mother took me to pick berries in the same place where her mother brought her when she was a child. I know the smell, the beauty, how it feels, but mostly I remember the sounds of my home on the ocean. There's been much change to the landscape I had grown up in. Most visible is the clear cutting to make way for, the, for transmission lines by the energy sector, cutting directly through our hunting territory. Through reflecting on the changes I can remember in my life, I began to think about the immense change that occurred in my grandmother's lifetime, the so-called progress that had changed her and her family's way of being. In 1949, Newfoundland joined Confederation with Canada. Premier Joey Smallwood famously pronounced that there were no Indians on the island of Newfoundland. With this simple statement, there were no obligations of the Canadian government to the indigenous nations of Newfoundland and Labrador. My grandmother wasn't born in Canada. She was born in 1930 in the British Dominion of Newfoundland. I was very close to her. She was my best friend. We would spend endless hours visiting together playing cards, and just simply chatting up a storm. Since losing my grandmother over four years ago, I felt the importance of carrying on what she has taught me. Until a few years leading to her passing, she really spoke of her Indigenous heritage, as many people in my community did for many decades. I don't think it was because she wasn't proud of who she was, but it was that through the opposing influences and government classification, she wasn't allowed to acknowledge and express her pride in being Mi'kmaq. It was survival. It was through visiting that I learned much about who she was, how she grew up, and about her being Mi'kmaq without her ever explicitly saying it. One of the things she often spoke of herself was visiting the old people, as she called them, and how it informed who she was. Some of the old people she would talk about visiting were known locally as the basket ladies. The basket ladies were Mi'kmaq women who would come to Newfoundland from Nova Scotia to trade and sell baskets. They would always stop in Flat Bay, where my grandmother grew up, to stay and visit with extended family. The majority of the baskets created at that time are now in museum collections all around the world. Each one holds a story, each one has a history. But now they often don't get many visitors as they sit on the shelves in museums. I, don't get the chance, I didn't get the chance to ask her all the questions I wanted to about the basket ladies, or many other aspects of her life. It's through remembering these visits, through visiting baskets and, and objects in museum collections and galleries, and it's in reflecting on them that I learn about her, our people's way of life, and in turn, inspires many of my own artworks. Through my work as a visual artist, I strive to create environments that tell stories. My drawings are derived from known patterns, symbols, and colors from various Mi'kmaq and Biotuk visual sources, such as carvings, porcupine quill work, and basket work. 
My installations often include natural materials and sounds recorded from the land to create an interactive space. The starting point for each of my works begins with reflecting, revisiting, and remembering home. The more time I spend with family and friends, the more I learn about myself and where I come from. I strive to replicate this practice of visiting within the art gallery. At home, there's an ongoing cultural revival. People are now reconnecting to their heritage and finding pride in being Mi'kmaq once again. People have been working for decades in our community to rectify our erasure, to acknowledge our presence as Indigenous people of Gadam Kuk. Federal government today is still deciding who is and isn't a recognized Mi'kmaq person under the Indian Act, and it is causing great stress and confusion within our community. Despite whether or not the federal government recognizes or grants status to Mi'kmaq individuals, it is through visiting one another and sharing with one another that we know we are the people of this land. We are Ilnu. It's a very important and trying time in my community. This is why I continue to create. Our visual culture is present and identifiable, but many of the meanings of why we use particular designs have been lost. I am one of many young Mi'kmaq artists giving these designs voice again. Our designs are being incorporated into everyday clothing and objects again. Basket making is alive and thriving. All these things are being done by young people all across Mi'kma'ge. Our language is being learned by more and more of our people. We all have lots to learn from visiting, asking questions, spending time with one another face to face, spending time on the land, and spending time with ourselves. Visiting has changed immensely. At one time, people would visit for days, weeks. Now it seems that it's often hard to find the time to visit for longer than an hour. All the people living on this land known as Canada need to visit with each other more often so that we can come to understand one another, so that we truly know each other. The land that we all share and depend on is changing. The way in which our ancestors recorded and reflected on the land is different than the way we do today. Today we are faced with different environmental and socio-political challenges. With these new challenges, new stories need to be created, recorded, and passed on through artistic expression so that when our grandchildren or great-grandchildren visit, they can better understand how to move forward in a good way. Gizi Damug Mahamigo Don Menak Det Bahai Glodenwig Nige Maui Donij Ak Abuk and Madul Desnuk Gidup Gweadisin Ukjid Mahamigo you, the ancestors, have made the land of which we have not taken proper care of. Now, let's all come together to help one another so that we may heal for this land. Walalan, thank you.